Hi there, this is tuxacher.com and in the, today's video we want to take a closer look on KU DSLR dashboard a tether application in this case for a regular Windows 7 or 8 notebook or PC just like announced in my last article about the Android version. I downloaded the zip file and expanded it to a regular folder as you can see here. It is not necessary to install the program. The only thing you have to do first is to install the Visual C++ runtime. Otherwise you might occur errors missing some dynamic link libraries. Okay. If the camera didn't sleep now, we start the application. Make it a little bit bigger, okay. And we start a connection through Universal Serial Bus. Okay, that looks good. We now can start Live View. Okay, and there is the Live View part. As I mentioned in earlier articles, the application was missing a freely positionable autofocus point, which is now here. You, we can take it like over here, okay. No. And press the button AF. And I think you can hear the focusing done within live view mode. Okay, we take it back. Uh, focus again. Okay, and of course you have the opportunity to enlarge the part you focused on and do a fine-tuning focusing with these buttons here. Okay, we go back to normal view. Okay, at this point you can start taking a capture by pressing the camera symbol or start taking a video by the video camera symbol but this is only available on a couple of cameras. Now we take the toolbox. One thing or one error I must say I, I occurred testing the Android version of the program is also here in the Windows version. The main controls is like ISO settings. If I try it to, to, uh, to do it with the mouse, like setting it on ISO 400, you see it doesn't change. I can also try to switch it like here. So, trying to set it with the mouse but uh, it doesn't matter if I set it with the mouse or cursor down buttons and hit enter the application won't take the ISO change same as with F numbers or some other controls so there has to be a little bit of work done with the controls for the camera settings as usual on such application you have the opportunity to switch RAW or JPEG mode to switch the way of uh, light metering like from evaluate mode to spot metering and as I described in a former description of this application and I won't try it this time is if you switch from RAW to JPEG to a format which the camera can't handle you might occur uh, error 70 like I did on my Canon 7D so since I take all my pictures in RAW format I won't change that one. Now what you can do is like for uh, focus stacking you can set oops that was the wrong button we are focused on the near point. Now what you can do with these two buttons, you can save this focus point one 
And if we, we want to do um, a focus stack, we take a much farer point to focus on, like this one. You see that it's a little bit hard to position the rectangle exact to the position. Make a focus. Now you hear the come. Okay. Now it's sharp. And save it to button 2. Now what you can do with that, this one, we go to the toolbox, say focus bracketing, and now you can choose either the direction from closest to farthest, huh? we say closest, and we can set the start focus point either on the current position, which we don't want in this case, we set it to focus point 1. And accordingly, the end focus point we set to focus point 2. Now, you're almost already set. What is a little bit of experience necessary is to determine how many pictures you're going to have to take to have everything sharp in this picture from the foreground to the background. We just want to try it out here and set the frame count to 10. Okay, and now we could start the sequence, I hope. You see Capture in Progress and the application is hung up. Okay, the application hung up. We start it again to just see if we now get a regular live view. Okay, now we have the live view. But what happened? The application hung up and this led to an error on the camera turning the camera off would turn off the upper display of the camera, but the back display still was alive. This was only correctable removing the battery from the camera. So I'm sorry, but the application is not usable in practice for now. It's on the right way, just for the fact supporting Android, iPad and Windows system, but the author has a lot to do on bug correction and on safety for this application. This sounds a little bit hard, but um, the version is only uh, 0.2.3. It's really at the beginning, but it's not stable to use it in daily practice, at least to my opinion. Maybe it also depends on different camera types, since the application tries to support Canon, Nikon and in the last version also Sony cameras. Maybe the author should concentrate on one brand and then try to develop or support other brand of cameras to get a little bit more safety into the application. Okay, that was a little bit disappointing, but I sort of expected it since, okay, now you can see cool as a dashboard is not function anymore. I expected it uh, since the Android version isn't stable too. Okay, that was the look on cool DSLR dashboard for today. If you have any question or suggestion, please leave me any comments and I'll say goodbye till the next time. Ciao, Tuxoche.